A while ago, I posted a video of the nine things I wish I knew before I started a foundry. In that video, I mentioned I used silicon bronze. I use silicon bronze. Which is copper and silicon, and I got bombarded with comments like this. Bronze is an alloy primarily of copper and tin, not silicon. By the way, bronze is copper and tin, not copper and silicon. Bronze is a copper tin alloy. Silla what bronze? Why not real bronze? Are you stupid or something? All kinds of comments. And granted, they're not wrong, but they're not right either. So today, I'm going to show you how to make silicon bronze, not tin bronze. That's not going to be good. Now, for most bronze foundries, the industry standard is silicon bronze. It flows exceptionally well, has minimal shrinkage, and is really nice to work with. The silicon bronze I use is Everdure bronze, and it has a composition of 95% copper, 4% silicon, and 1% manganese. Zero tin. You could put tin in it, but the main alloying agent is silicon. I make and use tin bronze too, but the welding rod I use is also silicon bronze. And when I use these together, the color matches perfect. If I use a silicon bronze welding rod on tin, the color's close, but not quite the same. I'll be using copper pipe and a little copper wire. I'm going to make a total of 5,000 grams. I use grams because it's way easier than pounds and ounces. How many ounces is 5% of 10 pounds? Nobody knows. But if I use grams, it's just a lot easier. So to make an even 5,000 grams, 95%, whoop. So 95% of 5,000 grams in copper, 4,750. So this is my copper base. Now I need 4% silicon. For silicon, I'll measure out an even 200 grams. Silicon is an odd metal. It's very hard and very brittle, but it's also very light. Lastly, I'll need 50 grams of manganese. It's not a malleable metal, it's pretty brittle, but it's also pretty hard. I'm not sure the best way to break it into smaller pieces. I also noticed it sparks when you hit it with a hammer, which is kind of cool. So these are all my proportions for the bronze. Now the melting point of copper is 1,984 degrees. The melting point of silicon, 2,577. And manganese, 2,275. Now you may be thinking, my furnace doesn't get up to 2,500 degrees, so I can't make this. But that's not how that works. The melting point of table salt is over 1,400 degrees. But when you put salt in water, the water is in 1,400 degrees. The salt dissolves in the water and it's the same with the silicon. I don't have to get this to melting point, but once the copper is molten and I put the silicon in, it dissolves similar to the way salt dissolves in water. This is also why making homemade steel crucibles is a bad idea, as this guy found out. Uh, this one got weak. It is everywhere. The steel will dissolve away. That's why I use clay graphite crucibles. First we'll get the copper molten, and as always we'll heat up the mold either with a torch or what I like to do, I just set it on top of the furnace. Once the copper is completely molten, then I'll add the silicon and manganese. Probably would have been easier just to throw the whole paper cup in. Either way, it's a one-time use deal. Now the silicon is a lot less dense, so that just floats on top, so I stir it in and mix it in and eventually that will dissolve into the copper. And it's the same story with the manganese. You can see the chunks are still floating on top, they get red hot, and it's like glowing gravel floating on top of the copper. Eventually though, they disappear and I can scrape off the slag just like I would any other melt. Or dross, I should say. Slag is specific to the iron industry, I believe. You could correct me if I'm wrong on that. Once it's mixed, it's time to pour it just like I would any other ingot. And for no real reason at all, I'll quench the ingot because it's super cool for the camera. Super cool. 
I'll cut one end off and show you the beautiful golden bronze color that is revealed. I'll check the weight to see what our final result is. We should have 5,000 grams, but we're a little shy. I lost a few grams in total, and it may be I scooped a little bit out in slag. Or maybe there's a few drops left back in the crucible, but it's pretty close. And that's how you make silicon bronze. If you want a stronger bronze, then aluminum bronze has a lot more strength. Each bronze has its own properties. They have aluminum bronze, silicon bronze, tin bronze, phosphorus bronze, lead bronze, arsenic bronze, all kinds of different bronzes. So yes, bronze is copper and tin, but it's also copper and silicon and a lot of different other recipes. I always write on my ingots to signify whether it's silicon or tin, and some people like to put a shine on it and just stack their ingots. That's fine, but I like to make stuff. If you're a metallurgist and have any tips to add, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.